Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 1 for December the 3rd, 2017. We began a new unit today, Unit 1, entitled The Early Church Proclaims Faith in Christ. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Seeking Wholeness. Our devotional reading comes out of Psalm 118, verses 1 through 14. Our background scripture is taken from Acts chapter 3 and our print passage uh, is taken from Acts chapter 3 verses 11 through 21. Our key verse reads, By faith in the name of Jesus this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all see. That is Acts chapter 3 uh, verse 16 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today number one is to examine the role of Peter's healing miracle in the post Pentecost time frame. Second to value the need for bold witnessing and third to exercise a faith that reaffirms that the identity of Jesus Christ in the first century is the same identity in the 21st century. We have three outlines that we will be discussing. Uh, the first outline is entitled Warped Faith. The second outline is entitled Twisted Faith. And then the third outline is entitled Connected Faith. I certainly thank and praise God for being able to share uh, this Sunday school lesson with you to be able to uh, uh, share God's word with you and we hope that you will join us in studying and uh, taking notes we certainly going to give some scripture uh, as we move along in this lesson but uh, this is our winter quarter and we certainly um, uh, count it a privilege and a blessing to be able to uh, come before you today. So let us begin with the biblical context for this lesson. Uh, in her infancy, the early church showed little desire to engage in a mission of uh, worldwide evangelism. The first uh, century Christians uh, were Jews living in Jerusalem, Jews who found in Jesus the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies and promises of the Messiah. The healing of the lame man recorded in Acts chapter uh, 3 verses 1 through 10 uh, precedes today's uh, lesson and it is one of uh, many miracles performed by the apostles. This miracle uh, is of importance because it provided the occasion for a powerful sermon that illustrated the content of the apostolic preaching that would be presented to the Jews. This preaching would lead to the first opposition from Jewish leaders who were boldly confronted with testimony and proof that Jesus is the Messiah and that they had killed him. And so as we get into this lesson today, uh, uh, we want to understand that uh, the world uh, at the time of this writing uh, was already uh, under threat of judgment before Christ came. Uh, but Christ's coming uh, with salvation became the reality offered uh, to a hostile world. I want you to look at John chapter 3 uh, verses uh, 17 through 21 and also Matthew 23 uh, ver uh, verse 37 and also Romans uh, chapter 5. Uh, verse 8. So we know uh, uh, in the third chapter of the book of Acts uh, we find Peter and John uh, going into the temple uh, the Bible says around the ninth hour uh, and they ran into a man who had been lame uh, 
uh, and subsequently they they healed him or he was healed and so uh, this lesson as we pick up our text today from the 11th verse uh, through the 13th verse from the third chapter of the book of Acts is the people uh, the people's reaction uh, to that healing and so uh, I want to begin reading from the King James Version, Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 13, and then this is our first outline, Warped Faith. And as the lame man which was healed uh, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them uh, in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered, unto the people ye men of Israel why marvel ye at this or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power uh, or holiness we had made this man walk verse 13 the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob the God of our fathers has glorified his son Jesus whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. So as I was reading uh, these verses, uh, two questions came to mind. Uh, what do we tell people concerning our salvation, uh, our deliverance, uh, our healings, etc.? Uh, and then secondly, who gets the credit? Uh, so we find um, uh, in this passage, uh, this is Peter's second sermon. Uh, and so after this uh, awesome miracle unfolded before the people, word spread quickly as many began to run to the familiar area to see for themselves what had occurred. Uh, the area was a popular gathering place as Jesus himself would engage uh, religious leaders there. I want you to look at John chapter 10 verse 23. Uh, and so and would Jesus would also remain uh, popular as the saints would uh, be gathered um, on one accord there later. And so I also want you to look at Acts chapter 5 verse 12. Uh, that is not the case in today's lesson. Peter was now speaking to many onlookers after noticing uh, the obvious excitement in the air and amazement in their eyes. So he asked uh, some straightforward questions challenging their beliefs and the focus of their attention. Uh, the crowds were used to charismatic uh, um, speakers and, and performers uh, that would stir up their emotions. Uh, this was an issue that Paul and Barnabas would deal with uh, later. I want you to look at Acts chapter 14 verses 8 through 13. So uh, people can easily miss faith in God by focusing on the people of God. Uh, let me say that again. People can easily miss faith in God by focusing on the people of God. In essence, Peter said, do not be amazed at what has occurred or even consider we are powerful or have great holiness that has made this man walk. Uh, this leads to warped faith. Yes, we should respect godly leaders, but faith must remain in God. Let me say that again. Faith must remain in God. And so Peter immediately directed the people's attention from them unto God. Peter pointed directly to the one who had done the healing. It was God. But Peter not only pointed to God, he also shared the gospel as he began to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Very plain uh, 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 language here for us to understand uh, and how we can sometimes uh, get off uh, uh, center, if you will, uh, by looking at uh, what has happened uh, in our lives in terms of deliverance uh, uh, as to, 
give the credit to some individual instead of giving the credit and the glory and the honor and the praise unto God. And that's what Peter wanted to do in this uh, second sermon was to take the attention off of himself and off of John and put it uh, on to God himself. And it is very important as we understand uh, the gospel message is very important uh, uh, to determine what we believe and and who we believe in and um, we're going to share a few more scriptures later on because we want to be able to understand that our faith uh, should not be placed so much in another man but our faith uh, if we want to be healed if we want to be saved if we want to be set free uh, our faith must be grounded in Jesus Christ. It must be grounded in God. It must be grounded in the testimony that God gave concerning his son. And that's what Peter wants to do here. But the, uh, the question is in the quarterly, uh, how uh, honestly share times when you uh, paid more homage to mankind than to God. This may uh, have been a doctor, a preacher, or other person, and how can we boldly yet engagingly get people to see that God is the reason uh, for uh, all of our blessings? And that's very important. We must always remember to uh, to to say, if you will, God to God be the glory. Uh, uh, something that 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 uh, 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 puts the uh, shines the light back onto God. I was uh, the Spirit of the Lord was reminding me of James, I believe, in the third chapter, uh, when we start even talking about what we are going to do today and tomorrow. We should preface that by saying, "If it's the Lord's will." We should always be able to understand that. Uh, James goes on to say, I believe, in the first chapter, that every good and every perfect gift comes down from the father of lights uh, and, and so we have to be able to do that because we don't want to provoke God to anger and we don't want to try to uh, uh, share uh, the glory of God uh, or to share in the praise that only God is due and we have to remember that as Christian it doesn't mean that God have not blessed us uh, to be great and to to do great things but but if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side we would not be able to do anything so we want to be able to keep these things in mind our uh, second outline is entitled twisted faith uh, this come from the comes from Acts chapter 3 uh, verses uh, 14 through 18 now I want to read this from the NIV translation. Verse 14, you disown the holy and righteous one and ask that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. Uh, you, we are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can all see uh, verse 17 now fellow Israelites I know that you acted in ignorance as did your leaders but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets saying that this Messiah or that his Messiah would suffer very powerful uh, uh, language here that Peter is sharing with with the nation of Israel with the Jews uh, that you disowned the Messiah uh, uh, you had an opportunity to accept him but you uh, you you disowned him and uh, uh, and you had an opportunity to speak up uh, uh, on behalf of, of, of the Savior uh, of the Messiah but uh, uh, back in the text, they chose Barabbas. They chose a murderer uh, uh, instead of, uh, of Jesus. And so Peter lets them know that you killed the author of life. You killed the Holy One of Israel. 
But I like this in verse 16, by faith. I want you to catch this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. If we want to be saved, if we want to be healed, if we want to be set free, uh, uh, we must have faith and then we must use the correct name. We must come in the name of Jesus. So these two things caused, uh, 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 triggered this healing of this lame man as Peter uh, 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 un unlocks this for the onlookers. It was by faith. It was by faith in the name of Jesus. And so uh, 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 in verse 17, Peter says, you Israelites, you acted in ignorance. You didn't understand what you were doing. And didn't Jesus say that from the cross as he prayed for them uh, 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 during the crucifixion? He said, Father, forgive them, uh, for they know not what they do. Uh, they thought that they were just killing a, a man and, and that they would be done away uh, with him once they crucified him. They didn't understand. They didn't take into account that what Jesus brought uh, to the Jews, to the house of Israel, to the nation of Israel was salvation, but they didn't want that. So Peter boldly continued with the accusation in order to challenge and convict the hearers uh, the hearts, I'm sorry, of the people regarding their twisted faith in an effort to get them to see the error of their ways. Peter chose his words carefully. And it goes on to say, uh, uh, Peter then went on to point out that the miracle that uh, they witnessed came about because of the faith that they had in Jesus and not because of their might or strength. The man they knew to be lame was now walking completely healed. This was living proof that God is more than able not only to heal but also to set free and to deliver. For the man served as living proof of the power of the name of Jesus and that God has done just what he said he would do uh, uh, through Jesus God took this man's personal problem and placed him and his healing on display to draw more people to Christ. Let me ask you a question. I want you to think about your healing and I want you to think about your deliverance and I want you to think about all of the things that you have gone through to get to that healing, to get to that deliverance. And I want to ask you this question. Do you think that all that you have gone through was just for you? Do you think that that deliverance, that that blessing, uh, that, 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 that healing was just for you? We learn here in the text uh, and certainly through the commentary that God allowed you to go through what you went through and then subsequently delivered you, healed you, saved you, and set you free but there were people watching you go through there were people watching you and 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 looking at your situation and they know that you were on your last leg if you will they know you were down and and you were out but the lord raised you up and so my point is is that sometimes we have to consider that what we are going through and then even after we get that healing that maybe God took us down this path and through the valley and the shadow of death that somebody might see you and come running and asking you, what must I do to be saved? That's something that we have to think about because our afflictions uh, and our situations, uh, if we don't... Uh, uh, take a selfish view of it, it may be that God wants to draw somebody else through what you are going through. Perhaps God is delaying uh, 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 what you are, are asking him to do in your life and you continue to struggle and go through 
uh, 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 the situation, but perhaps God is drawing a bigger audience to you. Perhaps God is drawing a greater uh, 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 multitude of people uh, to see what you are going through prior to delivering you. Think about this man sitting in front of the temple back in our lesson text in Acts chapter 3. Uh, the Bible says here in verse 2 of Acts chapter 3, it was a certain man that was lame uh, from his mother's womb. From That's a very, very long time. Uh, so people had to, uh, they uh, lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, since his mother's womb. He was lame from his mother's womb. It took somebody to take him where he needed to go in order for him to be in the place where God wanted him to be and run into the two disciples, uh, 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 Peter and John, that God wanted this man to encounter. Who would have been able to predict that it would have taken this kind of situation for this man to go through to get a healing. Who would have thought that? Who would have predicted that? Only God would have known that this man's uh, uh, lame condition would go for a season and a time until he met Peter and John. Who would have known? So as he set the lame man at the a gate begging he ran into or two of the disciples came passing by and he was able to get or uh, make contact these disciples that were passing by knew Jesus knew of his power knew of his works knew of his faith knew of his resurrection they had all of this information and so they gave this lame man what they had which was their faith and their knowledge of that faith in Jesus Christ this puts much more perspective on what we're going through even uh, uh, as I think about this even in my own life and we all ask God to deliver us from various things I do it and so do you but at the same time what is the full scope of this uh, and why is it sometimes that God seems to delay in answering the things that we ask him to do? I want you to ponder on these things uh, as we look at this text and as the Lord just uh, unlocks this for us that we might be able to understand. And, 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 and if I could just summarize all of this, uh, 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 these comments, perhaps God has a purpose for what you are going through and God has a plan for what you're going through and perhaps it has more to do with than just you. In our text here in our lesson share examples of when you got your faith twisted and your eyes and focus were no longer on Jesus Honest conversation will acknowledge that our love for money, a person, or things can cause us to get twisted. Have you ever been that way? Have you ever lost focus? We all have at some point in time. Our trial, our tribulation caused us to lose focus. Uh, and so I, this is a very powerful statement here honest conversation that sometimes our faith has been uh, uh, off kilter if you will has been out of balance and then our last outline is entitled connected faith this comes from Acts chapter 3 verses 19 uh, through 21 and from the King James Version the Bible says repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, 
whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. I want to share these verses with you um, in terms of uh, a little bit more information about what was foretold by the mouth of all his prophets. Uh, I want you to look at, uh, but Peter also, he could have cited such passages as Deuteronomy 18 uh, verse 15, Isaiah 53, uh, Psalm 2, uh, Psalm uh, 16 verses 8 through 11, and Psalm 22, and I also want you to look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10 and 11. What I love about this uh, in terms of uh, uh, foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, God is not doing anything that he has not already said he would do. What God is doing uh, with the nation of Israel and certainly through uh, uh, the early church and the fulfillment uh, post Pentecost God is fulfilling everything it had already been spoken what God would do and so these scriptures that I gave you speak and there are others um, that God had already pronounced through his prophets what he would do God had already pronounced uh, that he would send the Messiah what happened uh, the nation of Israel rejected him they rejected him they crucified him and so now if we want to get this con this this connected faith or get back on track if you will and I think it should be pointed that God is such a loving God. If you if you can follow through this text and and and, and has Peter has explained uh, how they committed murder in crucifying Jesus, but God is still willing to forgive. God is still willing to uh, uh, to reach out His hand to the nation of Israel. Why is He doing this, God? Uh, 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 why is God showing so much love and mercy toward his own people who have acted in ignorance and crucifying his only begotten son so God is 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 awesome in terms of his love and and we saw that in John uh, uh, chapter 3 uh, for God so loved the world there's nothing we can do to escape the love of God it just keeps coming and it keeps unfolding his mercy and his grace David put it this way surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life but back in this text here and I want to lift another word uh, that we need to be acquainted with if we want to be whole and that is the word repent the remedy here Peter in this message he diagnoses the situation uh, uh, he challenges the people but any in any good message by any good preacher there has to be a remedy for the things that we cite the good news is we have an escape route through Jesus Christ and that route is given in verse 19 of Acts chapter 3. Peter says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, be changed, be transformed, that your sins may be blotted out. Huge that, that God is saying to us, to the nation of Israel, to as many as would call on the name of the Lord we have a great opportunity to repent to acknowledge become godly sorry for our sins and get our situation of sin blotted out peter as all christians should uh, had no desire to leave the people hanging with a warped and twisted view of god nor the guilt of what they had done uh, to his lamb it should be our desire and duty to help 
people to secure a connected faith. One that is not connected to man, money and or materials, but is connected to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, as Peter did in his first sermon, I want you to look at Acts chapter 2 verse 38. He called on them to repent. That is to reconsider their ways and think differently about their actions. This repenting, a changing of the heart and turning around, leads to a full conversion and connection to God, thus allowing for our sins to be blotted out. Note that the people do the repenting while God does the converting. This is so good and gracious, Peter pointed out, that God will blot out our sins and will refresh us, giving us a renewed commitment, drive, and dedication to and for him. This Jesus will be preached from henceforth. There will be no prophecy of a Messiah. He has, sent, he has been sent to the people. There is no need to look for another or expect another gospel. This gospel of, sh of salvation shall be preached and is the continuation and completion of this process. We must live in expectation of Christ's personal physical return with us in this world. Until then, heaven has received him out of our sight and must re retain him until the end of time when he will restore all things. There is no new message, saints, Christian friends. There is no new word. There is only what God has given us. There won't be another savior to come. There won't be another name. There is no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved. Uh, I heard Jesus say these words in the 14th chapter of John. No man comes to the Father but by me. No man. So this is very powerful language for us to be able to digest. That repentance is still on the table. If you want to be whole today. If you want to be set free from your sins. If you want to be delivered from the penalty and the power and ultimately the presence of sin. You must repent. I heard Jesus say these words to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. You must be born again. All of us that are seeking to be saved. Needing to be saved. We must start over. And the process is laid out for us in Romans chapter 10, verse 8, 9, and 10. When you have time, read that. But we must repent. We must confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that God has raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible declares unto us, you will be saved. So, the question here in the quarterly as we come to the close, consider the people you know. How can you share the good news of Jesus with someone to help that person establish a connected faith? So we have the remedy here um, and we must ask God as I was reading this uh, lesson uh, 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 it, it was very pointed that, that we should ask God to help us help other people. We should ask God to help us uh, uh, live in a way to help other people. Uh, it's not just our theology. It is our conduct. It is what we do uh, in addition to what we say that helps draw men to Christ. Think about Israel. They were supposed to be an example coming out of Egypt into the promised land. They were supposed to be evangelists of the Old Testament to demonstrate to the world that God had uh, uh, delivered them. They had all of the laws and the commandments and the ordinances and the statutes to help them to live uh, productive, uh, effective lives uh, that would demonstrate to the world that God is able to save. People need to see uh, 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 that, that God is able. 
And how do they see that except they see that through us? Uh, if we live lives that exemplify the power and the characteristics of God, don't you know someone will see that? Don't you know that that is attractive uh, to a world that's full of chaos? Don't you know that when you are living a life that is uh, 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 under the direction and the peace of God, don't you know that somebody that is living in a confused state don't you know they look at you and marvel at you seem to be at, at such peace while my life is in in chaos how did you get such peace and so now the door is open for you to explain that Jesus says these words my peace give I unto you not as the world and so this it's a difference it's a peace that passeth all understanding and so Peter wanted these Jews, the nation of Israel, to understand that they still had an opportunity through repentance to accept uh, 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 and to confess unto Christ that which they have crucified, that which they in ignorance crucified, that, uh, uh, that they rejected, they had an opportunity to come back to. I love this lesson. I hope, trust, and pray that you have gotten something to help you or to encourage you uh, to stay the course. I know that you are going through uh, as saints, and we should be. We are following a, a Savior who was crucified, and we know that we have a portion that we must go through as well. But always remember, somebody's watching you. Somebody is watching what God is doing in your life and somebody believe it or not wants to be like you somebody wants to know the God that you know somebody wants to understand what you understand somebody wants to experience what you have experienced even through your testimony so keep these things in mind and be sure when the opportunity presents itself when someone asks you how did you get delivered what did you do to be set free be sure to tell them faith in Jesus Christ will move mountains calling on the name of the Lord will move obstacles nothing is impossible Luke 1 37 will be impossible for God our closing prayer dear Lord Hear your servant's prayer. We seek to be bolder witnesses for you. Strengthen our faith. Shake off any twisted or warped views of you that we may have. For you are not just a giver, but a supplier and sustainer. Teach us to stand boldly for you as you draw people unto you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I hope, trust, and pray that uh, we have been a blessing to you today. And until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.